The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a recent talk, Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the Equitable Life Assurance Society, remarked, Self-reliant citizens living in their own mortgage-free homes are the cornerstone of a free country. That is why, of all the manifold services rendered by the Equitable Society to its four million members, one which I rank near the top in importance is the Equitable's Assured Home Ownership Plan. In about 14 minutes, I'll be back to tell you homeowners about the Equitable Society's famous Assured Home Ownership Plan that President Parkinson considers so important. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Racketeering. Its title, The Innocent Hijacker. Did you ever stop to consider how many Americans are found guilty each year of offenses for which they are sent to prison? Only a little thought will make you realize that it must be a dismal and appalling number. An annual crime crop that runs into hundreds of thousands of men and women. Roughly the same as jailing the entire population of a big city. Each year, likewise, the prison cells release thousands upon thousands of prisoners. Most of them come out on parole. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation deals with one of these paroled men. This particular file was chosen because it illustrates a great and glaring weakness in our parole system. A weakness which can and should be corrected. Tonight's file opens in the visiting room of a state prison. An attractive woman sits on a bench before the huge wire screen that separates the prisoners from visitors. As the woman waits, a prisoner approaches and sits across from her. Betty? Hello, dear. I got news. Great news. What is it, Eric? I'm getting out. You what? Yeah, I'm paroled. Oh, Eric. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to be happy. I am happy. What you crying? Of course. When, 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 when you get out? Tuesday. I just can't believe it. Yeah. Here, take a look at this. Here. That's the word, right from the warden's office. Yeah. yeah. Hey, honey, I, I want you to quit your job. Oh, well, now, Eric... Look, I've been laying off for three and a half years, and now it's time you took a rest. But we'll need... Whatever we need, I'll take care of. I'm getting a job as soon as I get out. With who? Well, I don't know. Not Vince Parker. Honey... I promised you I was all done with that. I'm, I'm getting a legitimate job. Because once I'm out of here, I'm, I'm staying out. The following week in a nearby city, a flashily dressed man enters a midtown office. A second man is seated behind a desk. He looks up from the morning mail. Good morning, Leo. It ain't a good morning. Why not? Because three of our guys come up today and get hit with a book. Twenty years each. Two old. Yes, I know. How do you know? It just happened. One of my friends at the courthouse called me. Oh, this puts us in great shape. Now, there's no point worrying about it. Vince, if you told me where a truck would be knocked off tonight, I'd have to do it myself. We're out of drivers. Lots of businesses have personnel problems these days. You think it's always easy for me to get help from my stores? Oh, so you run an ad in the papers. We can't do that to get guys to heist a truck. Eric Fisher will drive for us. Where's he hiding? He hasn't been released yet. You're getting bad info. The kid got out Tuesday. How do you know? A friend of mine run into him. Just a minute. Yes, sir. 
I told you to notify me when Eric Fisher's parole went through. I did, Mr. Parker. I left a note on your desk. Hand it to me next time. Leo. Yeah. You know where Fisher lives? Uh Uh-huh. Go see him. Bring him over here right away. Groceries for Miss Fisher. Betty? Yes, sir. Oh. Got the meat and potatoes, honey. <laughs> you know something? I never knew I'd get such a bang out of a simple little thing like shopping. <laughs> yeah, or, or even just walking down the street. You know, I, I passed a cop, and he didn't say anything. He treated Leo, me just like I was Eric. in a... Huh? Leo Carson's in the front room. Oh? What's he want? He wants to see you. He said Vince Parker sent him. What should I do, Betty? Go in and see him. What can I say? Everything you've said to me, that you're through with Vince. Okay, I will. You, you want to come in with me? No, I'll stay out here. Hello, Leo. Hey, kid, long time no see. What are you doing here? I come to see you. Find out how you're feeling. <laughs> what kind of guy would I be if I didn't call on a pal when he got home, huh? I uh, also come to throw you an invite. Yeah? Where? Vince's office. No, thanks. He wants to see you. I don't want to see him. Now, look, Eric, what kind of way is that to act? If Vince does you the biggest favor of your life and you don't even come to Vince see Vince Parker did me a favor, huh? Sure. Like what? Well, you don't think it was an accident that you got sprung, I right? was paroled. Just like that? Huh? Yeah. You uh, remember making an application? No, but... Oh, wise up, kid. You're out because Vince put the fix in. Yeah, but the parole board signed The parole it. board is in Vince Parker's pocket. What? He owns him. Come on. No, Leo. I... Look, would you rather go back to the can? Vince can arrange that, too. What? He can put you back just as fast as he got you out. Now, which is it going to be? Well, come on, I can't hang around here all day. Give me an answer. Betty? Yes, Eric? I'm going out. Where? He's gone with me to see Vince Parker. Later that day at the police pistol range on the outskirts of town, Agent Jim Taylor is among the group of FBI men taking the regular firearms practice. Police detective Ned Walker comes up behind him. Well, you qualified, Jim. What? Oh, hello, Ned. Hi. You all through? Yeah. I'm in the locker room, huh? Okay. What happened in court this morning? All three hijackers got 20 years. Hey, that's fine. Vince Parker may have connections in a lot of places, but he can't touch judges. Any testimony about Parker? Nothing that would incriminate him. <laughs> there never is. Go ahead. Thanks, Jim. I'm glad to hear about those convictions, but they don't help me much. I've still got those interstate hijackings to work on. Mm-hmm. How about seeing that dispatcher at the terminal? It was his tip, you know, that let us get these three. Well, I interviewed him once, Ned. He says he never made any direct contact with Parker. It was all done by phone, and his payoffs were mailed to him. Mm. We don't have sufficient evidence to arrest the dispatcher yet, so all we can do is hope that Parker calls him again. After today's convictions? Yeah, there's no telling what Parker will do. And with 20 years facing them, maybe one of those men convicted this morning will talk. Could be. Well, I'll go by and give it another try. <laughs> Parker still here? Yes, go right in. Come on, Eric. Hi, Vince. Oh, come in. Go ahead, kid. Well, come back to the office, Eric. Sit down, son. How are you feeling? Okay. You haven't changed a bit. I understand you've been in town a few days. Uh-huh. 
Well, you should have come by. You know I'd be glad to see you. Why? You're one of my boys. People who just don't work for me, they're part of my family. What have you been doing? Three and a half years. I mean, since you got out. Looking for a job? I told you when you went away, your job here'd be waiting. Yeah, I know. I never welch. You're back on the payroll as of now. No, thanks. Can't you use the money? Sure. Then what is it? I don't want to work for you. Eric, how many years do you save with that parole? Two and a half. Like to go back and finish them? No. All I have to do is furnish my friends on the parole board with a picture of you in the company of known criminals, like Leo. Hey. I was just using you as an example, Leo. Now, Eric, you know what would happen if the board got a picture like that. It's up to you. What? What do you want? Fair exchange. I saved you two and a half years. Give me two and a half months' work and worry even. I can quit after that? You've got my word. Well, you don't have to decide this minute. Think it over. Take a little walk. I'll call you tonight. All right. See you, kid. There's your driver, Leo. Yeah, he only said he'd think about it. He'll say yes. Why'd you let him off so easy? I'm not sure I did. What? I've got an idea the dispatcher at the freight terminal may be working with the cops now, not us. Call him. If there's a truck we can use, we'll send Eric after it. And find out for sure. <laughs> Oh, over here, Ned. Oh, he told me you were down here someplace. I'm expecting a teletype from Washington. On the Vince Parker case? No. Mm -hmm. Might have a lead for you on that one later tonight. No, oh, what is it? The dispatcher at the freight terminal called us about 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. He's been contacted again. I wonder why he didn't call our office. He knows you're working on interstate jobs. This one's local. No, oh, I see. He tipped the contact about a truckload of silk. Wow, when's it being shipped? Ten o'clock tonight. It'll be hijacked just this side of the tunnel. Your men all set? Mm-hmm. Everything's covered. Good. I'll let you know if I come up with an angle on Vince Parker. Yeah, call me at home no matter how late it is, Ned. It'll be a pleasure to wake up Parker with that news. When did you get home? Mm. I don't know, honey. Maybe an hour ago. I left you a note saying I'd be next door. Yeah? I didn't see it. Eric, why did you do it? Do what? Go to see Vince Parker. I don't want to talk about it, Betty. I think we have to. Well, some other time, then. I... No, Eric. Right now. I don't want to. I... I'll get that. Hello. That you, Eric? Yeah. Vince Parker. I know. Have made up your mind yet, son? Yeah. You coming back to the organization? Yeah. Well, that's fine, boy, fine. Now, I want you to meet Leo at my office. Your first job's been picked out. You're taking a truckload of silk. I think you better get over to the office right away. The job's to be done in two hours. Okay, I'll be there. That was Vince Parker. Look, Betty... I know it was. Eric, what's happening? Nothing, I... You're lying. Please, Betty, don't ask me questions. I've got a right to know. Look, I... I gotta go out. You're gonna listen to me first. Eric, you went to jail three and a half years ago because you were caught stealing. Oh, wait a minute. Let I... me finish. You told me when you went in that if I'd wait, you'd never go wrong again. Well, I waited. And those three and a half years were just as long to me outside as they were to you in. But I waited because I believed you. Oh, Betty, you don't understand me. I understand me. I, too I... well. Nothing you said, nothing you promised meant anything. The first chance you get, you'll run back to Vince Parker. But I, I can't explain. You don't you. have to. I'm getting out of here. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Eric, and don't come back. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file, which shows how your FBI helps promote America's security. Now a few words to homeowners on the subject of mortgages. Have you ever talked to anyone who has a truly modern mortgage on his home? A modern mortgage plan is one that provides a painless way to pay off the mortgage years ahead of time. A modern mortgage plan gives you emergency protection against foreclosure and disaster. That's the kind of plan, 100% modern, you get in the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. You may be one of a select group of homeowners who can qualify for this plan. If so, here are the four main benefits you will enjoy. First benefit, this plan provides a painless way to pay off the mortgage years ahead of schedule. The explanation is simple. Each Assured Home Ownership Plan combines a low-cost first mortgage with life insurance protection. The insurance element creates a cash loan fund which increases steadily. Each year, the mortgage grows smaller and the cash loan fund bigger. I cleaned up my 20-year mortgage in about 14 years, thanks to the cash loan fund. Second benefit, the cash loan fund is a friend in need when sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Certainly helped meet my mortgage payments the year my wife had that serious operation. Third benefit, if the owner dies, his widow doesn't inherit a mortgage. She inherits her home free and clear. What's more, the Equitable Society not only cancels the mortgage, but also returns to the widow every cent her husband had paid to reduce the principal. Lastly, the mortgage draws interest not at 6, not at 5, but at 4%. And closing costs are low. Naturally, a plan like this can't be offered to everyone. Your Equitable Society representative will tell you whether you can qualify for this money-saving, home-saving, assured homeownership plan. All right, care of this station, to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Innocent Hijacker. Neither Director J. Edgar Hoover nor any member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is against the practice of paroling a prisoner who merits it. The only quarrel is with weak-kneed parole boards that grant paroles under political pressure or with crooked boards that sell paroles, as in tonight's file, on a cash-and-carry basis. What about the parole system where you live? Is it conducted with honesty and integrity Or do you often read in the papers of vicious criminals turned loose on society after serving only a fraction of their jail sentences? What can you do about it? Very little, single-handed. But in almost every community, there is at least one group of citizens organized to promote better government. Join them. Work with them. Support them. Again and again, where corruption has existed, The efforts of such good citizenship organizations have forced the politicians to clean house. Tonight's file continues the following morning at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor returns to his desk to find Detective Ned Walker. You waiting for me, Ned? Yes, Jim. That uh, hijacking went off on schedule. Oh? Sorry I didn't call. I've been at City Hospital all night. Why? What happened? Well, when we stopped the truck, there was some shooting. Hijacker get away? No, but he was badly wounded. Mm -hmm. I spent the night waiting for him to come, too. No luck up to 20 minutes ago. Mm. Who is he, Ned? Somebody named Eric Fisher. Fisher. I'll call and have his record pulled for you. Don't bother. I checked at headquarters. He drew a six-year sentence for hijacking back in 47. Got out last week on parole. No uh, Vince Parker angle in that hijacking, I assume. Not according to the records. Mm. Any idea when this fissure might be available? Maybe any minute. Maybe never. I think I'll take a chance and go to the hospital anyway. Maybe you can get something from his wife. Oh, where is she? I left her in the prison ward waiting room. Did you question her at all? She won't talk to anybody from the police. 
We shot her husband. Yeah, I'm probably in the same bracket, but if she's still there, I'll try. Pardon me. Huh? Mrs. Fisher? That's right. You don't mind if I sit here? Go ahead. You a cop? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. Keep them. My name is Taylor. So what? I'd like to ask you a few questions. What difference does it make what I say? The doctors don't even know if my husband's going to live. You think you're helping him by not telling us what you know? You don't care what I know. Mrs. Fisher, hijacking is not a one-man crime. I'd like to find out who your husband was working with. With? You mean for? All right. Who was he working for? Vince Parker. Are you sure? Of course I am. Can you prove it? I know it. That's enough. Well, not in a court of law. A man named Leo Carson came to our flat yesterday to see Eric. Mm -hmm. I went in the kitchen. In a little while, Eric called me and said he was going out. I asked where, and Carson said to see Vince Parker. I know this Leo Carson. He'll have a perfect alibi. Then last night, Eric got a call from Parker and left. Next thing I knew, some cop came in and told me about him getting shot. Did your husband tell you the call from Parker? I know it was him. Well, unfortunately, that's not legal proof either. Let Parker prove something. Well, I'm afraid he doesn't have to. No, he's a big shot. No, no, it's not that. It's just that he's in the clear so far. If your husband recovers, though, we might get all the proof we need. <laughs> The fuzz been here yet? No. Well, it will be. A friend at the hospital is still breathing. Yes, I know. He didn't want in to start with. Now he's got holes in him. He might start singing. You like the cooking at the state pen? I don't know. I've never been there. Well, take my word for it. The bumps in that kitchen can burn water. Leo, don't let little things excite Little? You. I can do 20 if this creep talks, and so can you. I thought about all this before I fixed his parole. You think any court will take his word against mine? I'm a respectable businessman. He's an ex-con. Uh, Forget about Eric Fisher. I'm setting up a new spotter for us at the depot. Uh, well, can we trust this one? Yes. I got him a job there starting next week. As of Monday, we're back in action. We almost tied Parker into that hijacking ring. How? Oh. Eric Fisher finally regained consciousness an hour ago. He admitted everything. Parker arranged for his pro without him knowing about it. Then he threatened to have it revoked unless Fisher paid off by working for him. Well, what else do you need? <laughs> Proof. But Fisher's testimony will be enough. Yes, if he lives. But before he could sign a statement, he lapsed back into a coma. Oh, fine. I called on Parker after leaving the hospital. He, he just laughed the story off. Did Fisher tell you where Parker stored his loot? If we could find the warehouse, no, maybe... No, he, he didn't know, Ned. Leo Carson was going to guide him there if everything went all right on the job. Mm -hmm. How about questioning Carson? I did. He was home, in bed, all day yesterday, and he's got three witnesses who will swear to it. Naturally. You know, there must be some way we can find legitimate evidence against Parker. There is. Just get Eric Fisher to put that story into writing and... Hey, wait a minute, Ned. You got something? Mm, I don't know. But come on, it's sure worth trying. Everything's set with the new spot events? Starting Monday, you call him at noon. Okay. Now, here's the way it'll work under the new arrangement. You call him and... Yes? Mr. Taylor of the FBI is here again. Send him in. That FBI man is back again. Well, what for? Just be patient, Leo. We'll find out. Oh, back so soon, Mr. Taylor? Yep. You remember Mr. Carson? 
Yes, very well. Meet Detective Ned Walker, police department. How are you, Mr. Walker? Hello. No, I, I see you later. Oh, please. don't leave, Carson. You'll find this interesting. You both will. When you left here this morning, Taylor, you promised not to return without some proof. That's right. We're not going over that story about the poor lad in the hospital again, are we? Only one portion. Fine. What was his name again? Eric Fisher. Oh, yes. Fisher told me that he never applied for his parole. <laughs> Someone smuggled it to him inside a loaf of bread? Ned Mayer, the original application from the prison file. Sure. Here you are, Jim. Thanks. Look this over, Mr. Parker. You'll notice there are no food stains on it. I'm sure you're trying to make some point with this. Fisher says that you arranged for his parole. What? Well, well, that's the best story yet. I never even heard of the boy. Take a closer look at the application. Any particular part? Yeah. Signature. It says Eric Fisher. Anything familiar about it? No. There should be. Why? You wrote it. Now, just a the minute. The experts from our laboratory are willing to testify that you did. They are? Yes kind of destroys your story about not knowing him, doesn't it? Well, it, it doesn't mean he worked for me. No, but we can prove that, too. Oh, uh, here are two more papers. What are they? Warrants for the arrest of both of you. Vince Parker and Leo Carson were convicted of violation of the federal hijacking statute. Each received a sentence of 15 years in the federal penitentiary. Before the arrest of Vince Parker, further evidence was gathered which established his leadership of the hijacking ring. Leo Carson and the other members of the organization were also arrested and convicted. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI was closed, as you have seen, for a number of reasons. Cooperation of local police played a vital part. The day-in and day-out effort of the special agent assigned to the case was also important. The vital evidence, which was the key to the solution, came this time, as it does in so many cases, from the little-known members of the FBI Crime Laboratory, men who, with their knowledge of science, are helping in the fight to gain the American people another freedom, freedom from crime. Now, one final message to homeowners. Are you looking forward to some future day when you'll be able to say, My mortgage is all paid off. I own my home free and clear. Why not make these words come true while you're still in the prime of life? Ask your Equitable Society representative to explain how and why owning an Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan can mean a paid-up mortgage years ahead of time. See your Equitable Man soon. Or send a postcard, care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Manhunt. Its title, The Island Fugitive. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Ed Begley, Georgia Ellis, Lamont Johnson, and Tom Tully. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Island Fugitive on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>